Hi, Matt McAleer, Director of Equity Strategies, Cumberland Advisors, November 19th. A little bit of chop this week in the equity markets. Uh, although anytime we saw a little bit of a drawdown, you did see money immediately flow to Old Faithful, the growth names. You know, very solid week out of the NASDAQ 100. You had Adobe on fire. You had Microsoft very strong. Uh, so the tactical trend portfolio was pleased with that. We did add a, a new security in tactical this week, and that's XME. That's the metals and mining ETF. Small position. We took a 3% position. In terms of the action, price action, from a technical standpoint, looks really good. There was good strength in those names into uh, Washington getting the infrastructure bill passed, or at least on the doorstep of being passed back a week ago, and they dropped on that news. We're familiar with that term, right? Buy the, buy the rumor, sell the news. Well, the news came out, metals and mining drifted down, not harsh, but drifted. We stepped in there and added a position there. You really see some nice demand for these names, and the infrastructure bill could be helpful to the demand going forward. Not to mention higher lows from a technical standpoint is something that always appeals to us. Over in the U.S. portfolio, no trades this week. Pleased with how securities are trading. Our alternative energies, specifically solar, continues to trade well. Semiconductors, lights out, new highs, uh, we've seen a nice little push in medical devices. Some of the areas we'd like to see get back in the game, and I've been saying this for a little while, biotech, quiet. One of the, one of the weaker sectors the last six months. Sometimes, shorter term, biotech shows weakness into rising rates. Why? Biotech, is, uh, as a whole, are companies that are, I call them dreamers, but they're very solid dreamers in that they're doing wonderful work. The fact is they need to raise money to get through these trials, to get drugs to market. When rates are higher, that starts to uh, lean on their ability to raise money at rates that can help them from a balance sheet standpoint. So higher rates short term can hurt biotechs. What is in the pipeline in front of the FDA is impressive with some of these drug companies. We'll keep an eye there. In terms of international, uh, we've spoken about how developed markets have outperformed emerging markets all year. Very nicely, double digit gains for the developed markets and emerging markets up two or three percent. Quite a, a, a gap there. We did see some bid come back into China this week, while with the COVID uh, flare up in Europe, we did see some pullback there. Canada still acts very strong. Japan still acts very strong. So in terms of that area, we're still leaning developed. In terms of international versus U.S., and we get this uh, question often in terms of allocations, we're still very much U.S.-centric. We, you've heard me mention relative strength in the past, and we track this on point and figure charts and other charts, and we track this weekly. We haven't had a buy signal in international equities versus U.S. equities in over five years and only a couple short-term buy signals in the last decade. So we're going to stay U.S. centric and just keep our eyes open that those valuations, because they do appear cheap internationally, those valuations start to create demand. Not yet, but we'll keep our eyes open. John Mousseau will be with you from the climate conference today, and John may have a special guest in terms of uh, what he'll cover uh, from a bond stamp standpoint is probably yields just dropping a little bit this week. It's kind of funny. The bond market often will give you hints to what lays in wait inflation-wise. I know there's a lot of headlines inflation-wise, but the bond market is not buying in completely. We'll see what that means in the next one, three, six months. Have a great Thanksgiving. We'll see you next week. Hi, good afternoon. It's John Musso, CEO of Cumberland Advisors. It is Friday afternoon, November 19th. We're up here at the USF 
Sarasota Manatee Campus for the CAC Climate Adaptation Forecast Conference. Uh, climate, very important, particularly in things like municipal bonds uh, and particularly along areas where there's, uh, you know, many people on coast because we know weather patterns have changed in the last few years and this kind of climate change is going to be forcing changes in behavior and financial disclosure documents, et cetera, as we go forward. So it's been a very interesting conference. Uh, more or less of a, a quiet week this week in bonds. Good news on the economic front. We had the Philly Fed Index higher, the Empire State Index earlier in the week higher. Initial jobless claims pretty much where they were expected to be around 270. Um, bond yields down a little bit. So the 10-year bond from a 156 to a 153, the 30-year bond from a 193 to a 191. Some of that is based on some of the concerns late in the week. We saw Austria maybe shutting down again because of the virus. Um, we, we don't know how this is going to play out. Uh, you know, for example, on municipal bond front, really hardly any change at all. In fact, maybe yields were up one or two basis points. So some cross currents out there. Uh, next week will be very quiet because of the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, but we do expect the market to eventually move some higher in yields as it adjusts to a higher run rate of inflation. Uh, we saw the president get his uh, second bill passed. We'll see whether that gets through the Congress. We know they passed the infrastructure bill. Uh, so there's more government spending out there coming. Uh, we hope everybody out there has a great Thanksgiving. Uh, as I have said to my colleagues a lot, uh, there's two times nobody should be alone. That's on Thanksgiving and Super Bowl Sunday. So if there's somebody to invite over your house, please do so. Have a great holiday.